Uh, let's begin. Hello, everyone, and a very good afternoon. Uh, this is Mayank, and uh, before talking about who am I, I'll probably have that in the other slide. I like to talk about my passions. So I have two passions, two important ones. First is to travel and explore, and I have like I like to go a lot of other places and explore what things are. And the other one is automation, and that's the topic for today for me. And why automation and what is automation is basically for me, it's just saving time of the customers, the users who are there, right? So that's the only uh, thing I target, and that is why our topic is hacking ERP next. So basically what all the developers have built, using it uh, like small, small functions which are there, and then going ahead with it and automating processes. But the second important part is as a non-dev addition. So this is basically, I'm not a coder. I was a consultant when I joined Frappe. And that's the journey which I'm going to talk about, how um, you really don't need to know coding to start. But yeah, definitely, you have to learn that small, small bits. So that's what, uh, what we're going to talk about. First, uh, talking with who am I? Uh, I also build products like other developers, right? But I'm a mechanical engineer, so my products you can actually touch, feel, and you might be able to eat as well. Uh, why that is because uh, the last product which we built was a 3D printer which prints chocolate, okay, and that is again edible, so probably you can eat it after you print that. Moving ahead, uh, this gave me as an engineer, it gave me curiosity always, like I, whatever I was working upon, I always thought like how is it happening, what it is doing, and after joining Frappe also, I was curious about how ERP Next works, right? So I used to ping every developer, okay, whatever function I've learned, I've learned how to uh, build a bomb, bill of materials. And then I'm asking them, like, how did you make this? And then I just got to learn a lot of things from that, which made me really curious about it. And the third and the most important thing is, I think everyone has that in their life is, let's say you did something which was very satisfactory for you and you had two hours more sleep that night, right? It is that important. For me, that was solutionist. So uh, I've been like in consulting for a year and I really like to uh, like solve issues of the customer's problems and that's what we are going to talk about today. But why hack ERP next? So this is uh, again a very uh, consultation oriented topic but it's for everyone because everyone has to do business and without consultants you can't really implement a good project, right? So the first important one is get the game up. So just learning a couple of hacks will actually help you implement your project with better efficiency which is again more important for your customers. And in the end, everything leads to automation, saving time, right? And the save time, you can probably chill somewhere else, just like the lady here. Um, the question is how, so I was thinking uh, while creating this presentation about how can I share my thoughts, like what is the best way, uh, which actually made me think about it. Awesome. So uh, how I'm gonna share is using real life examples, and everyone today is gonna be Sherlock Holmes. So we'll get into our mind palaces, touch some real bases, which I've, the customers I've worked upon with, and uh, then we will solution and find the features which we use from the product itself, the framework. So the first topic we are gonna touch today is take me to the location. A uh, very simple thing, and uh, this is the basic where we are, everyone is gonna start with, is uh, one of our customers uh, I've been working with, Christoph, uh, from the of Zuga. So uh, we had a use case where we had an address field and we had uh, field service users, people who wanted to use those address fields to get somewhere. And probably the only option was copy paste uh, from your mobile app and use another application like Google Maps and go ahead with that. So this is a demonstration for that. So I'm gonna go to my elevator list and uh, open the holiday in where everyone is today. Go to the address, copy that entire thing and go to the, the page, open another tab, go to Google Maps, and paste that in the Google Find Maps, and probably I'll reach there, like it just takes a minute or so. And in mobile application, it's much easier, right? Just uh, drag, drop things. Uh, but what is interesting here is we don't want to waste time in all this, right? Why copy something and why, I mean, go around uh, multiple pages? So what if I tell you a solution where I can give you this, something like this, using just a couple of uh, lines? So this is what we built. Uh, yeah, so I'm opening the Holiday Inn again. This is where my elevator is based out of. I'll go to the address, and instead of copying it, I'll just create a button, right? And I click on that button. So it just opens Google Maps directly, and I don't have to really copy or anything, okay? So the question is, how did we do that? Do we, do we have to like call a developer and ask them to do that? Not really. Just open Google Maps, check its URL. Oh, there are some fields where you can add. And in ERP Next of the framework, you know that every title can be used using a couple of Jinja tags, right? You can create a title. So that's how we customized it. 
So basically, uh, this is an option field in an HTML type field type, right? This is an option where you can code HTML, basically. So this is the URL which we used, and in that we used Jinja tags to just pass those addresses, right? That, it's that simple. All you have to do is just pass that data, and it works for you uh, pretty simply, right? Just one button of that. Okay. Uh, so we also used like anchoring and creating a button to a new route. That's like a basic HTML. So probably that's we can catch up on that later. Uh, getting to the second point, uh, second topic for today is never forget your pending invoices. Now, we have uh, customers in different sections and they might have a lot of invoices, right? Uh, in those invoices, what happens is there is this thing called dunning, which is when your uh, invoice gets overdue and you have given a credit line to your customer, right? For like, it has been a forced credit line. So you need to charge them some interest also after a month or so, correct? Uh, how does that happen in ERP Next is what I'm gonna show. So these are my four invoices. Uh, one is paid and three are overdue. I'll convert into a report to get the overdue dates, right? So it's become easier for you also to understand. Uh, imagine the current date to be 22nd September, okay? And all these different dates are, so this is overdue since five days, and the other ones are overdue since seven days, okay? So we have different, and the customer request is, I just want to create dunning for those seven days one. I don't know everything, and I don't want to see the paid ones also. So probably apply a filter, right? and go to the overdue ones, and these are my three overdues. So what do I do next? So if I want to create a dunning right now, I have to actually go to the sales invoice, right? I have to open this particular invoice, and I have to go create dunning, right? So this is again a standard process, right? You find the overdue ones, and you create a dunning. You select your dunning type, uh, which is like, for us, it's seven days, uh, and we just enter that data. So done, right? It took me, what, two minutes for that? Two, three minutes, find my dunning, see the overdues, and just create one. But what happens is you have missing out on dates, right? The, you never know when the dunning is going to overdue. Like, you have to figure out which are the five days one, add filters, find those dunnings. And what if you have hundreds of invoices? Am I going to do for that every time? No, right? So what we did is a solution, simple, simple solution like this with one of the server scripts, a scheduler one. And uh, developer speeds don't judge my code. Uh, this is, again, what I've learned. So we have all our three invoices, and two of them are pending since seven days, OK? Uh, this is an empty dunning. We have no uh, document created yet. So what I'll do is I'll probably go to the magical code, 11 lines code, which we have written. And uh, this is scheduler. It's an artificially we are going to run that. But uh, it's going to run every uh, midnight, probably. So I'm going to execute that. And just for checking, I'll just check if it is completed or it has failed. And it shows completed. And this is my dunning page now. So all the two dunning types have already been created without any effort of a human interference. And of course, you can auto assign it to uh, whoever you want to. So what happened here is basically, if I touch the screen, it just moves away, right? It's not this, though. So on the left-hand side, you see, right? It's always on time. You never waste time. And uh, auto creation of dunnings, assigning, and everything. Now, everything is automated, right? Uh, no one, you can probably chill, right? So that, that was the whole concept here. Uh, awesome. Talking about the script, it's an event frequency, right? It's a scheduler script which runs daily. Uh, it's a get all document which fetches all your document in uh, sales invoices where you just pass the doc type name. And then you use the add days from utils to uh, figure out what's the due date for that particular. And just uh, today, minus seven days, right? Because it's 22nd minus uh, seven, which is 15. And status is overdue, right? And that's it. And the famous one, get doc, create a new document automatically. Now this is what, 11 lines saves you hours of work. <laughs> and this is the most interesting one, uh, which I was working with a company called uh, Wami. Uh, the company is based out of Italy. And these guys are manufacturing of uh, water bottles, like the bislery, uh, so it's an alternative to that. And uh, an interesting use case they had is, when you're in such business, you have a lot of transportation involved, right? And for transportation from city A to city B, it's a different charge. And the truck you are using is, again, a different thing, right? And the packing size is also different. So all these factors create your transportation cost altogether. What happens is, now there are a lot of permutations and combinations involved as a human. What I have to go is, I have to go in every, fee, uh, every item, then open this, and open an Excel sheet, and check, OK, this is the city, this is that price, and figure out that price, and add it manually. So that is a lot of time and human error. So you, energy waste, which creates a lot of human errors as well. 
So the solution here was pretty cool one. Uh, this is when I learned Frappe.call from Faris. It's basically, for me, it's like uh, face versus brain, which is like client versus your server. What you see is your client, and what works behind is your server. And what happens is your client gives a call to the server, hey, buddy, this is uh, data A. Give me data B. And the server is like, OK, let me run a script. And probably after running that, I'll give you this. So this is how I learned the, uh, what do you say, solution thing where your JavaScript works, works with Python which is a give and take APIs, that's what we call it. And this is my favorite term, one-click solution. I, I mean, I hate to have three clicks for things which you can do in one. So I probably write a script around that. And the error which we reduced for this customer was about 99%, uh, which is saving a lot of euros, apparently. So uh, before this, I'd like to show you the demo for that. Okay, so uh, we are on the sales order. What we have done is, I'll go to the customer, and I'll select a random customer. So you see the transportation cost is not yet calculated because this particular customer doesn't require a calculation of transportation cost. But if I have a person uh, where I have to actually calculate the transportation cost, so this checkbox gets updated. And uh, what we did is created this button, right? This is an add transportation cost. Now I'll show you the difference between uh, both the processes. This is first, I'll, ah, delivery date. OK. So this is the first thing where I have selected the item. And uh, what I have to do is now, I have one item. I have to calculate the transportation cost. I'll just probably open an Excel and do all the work, which is really not required. So instead of that, instead of adding a row, what I'll do is I'll delete this. And I'll click on this button. Ah, OK. Now the error was because, uh, not because I'm a non-dev. <laughs> Uh, it was because we missed uh, the vehicle option here. So since we have to select which vehicle it is going uh, with, so I'll select this one, and I'll run this button again. So you see the system automatically from a stored value calculates the value and adds that up here. Now if I want to change the quantity, do I have to do anything else? No, I just have to click this button again, and those values get automatically updated. If I want, uh, want to add another item here, I can do that. I can select another item, and I click this. So it auto-refreshes and creates the new item right at the end. Now, what has it done for me? It's You may actually see, right? It saved you a lot of time, a lot of human error, which was actually involved. It just vanished, disappeared. So this is something which we did for them. And uh, yeah, so if I'll play this again. Uh, if you're interested, I'll just quickly go through this uh, script, what we wrote. So basically, uh, this is uh, CSS uh, for uh, actually calculating the parameters and creating that button. So once you have calculated what you have to share, I mean, actually taken from the client side what you have to share with the server, the next step is probably just use the frappe.call, right? Uh, thanks, Faris, for that. Uh, so frappe.call is a function which calls the API, and you pass the parameters to that. So once you have called and given the value, all you have to do is run a function where it catches those values. Now, these are just a solution of adding those values, creating those line items, which we did. Uh, we, we can go in details, but this is exactly like we are just filling in those values and just saving it the form, right? So this completes your client side of things. Now, getting to the server side, so it's an API method uh, with the name. Second is, we just collected the data what the client has shared, right? The client side shared some data, and we have collected that one. Uh, what we have done is now, so get value is basically from the customer and everything. We have selected those values. We have combined them to create a doc type name, uh, the document name of the doc type. So it becomes pretty easy. Just select the uh, customer name or the province name and just add that up. It fetches from the databases and it gets the value back. And that's it. So it just calculates the cost and gives up to it. So uh, this is what we did for them. And it actually saved them a lot of uh, uh, euros, which they were probably because of human errors and a lot of time also. Uh, some other fire stuff which I've worked upon is basically creating a Telegram bot. So I'm a lazy guy. I keep on forgetting my task, and I need to someone to nudge me every time. Just created a bot which tells me, OK, you have 11 days to, uh, left to work on that, and just keeps on reducing every day. So at least I know that I have less time left. Uh, second, like a lot of things that I've, I've worked upon is basically automating the parent task assignment based on the child task completion. That's also a simple script you can run. Uh, then shelf life management. 
uh, for some pre-sales this I've worked upon. And I created my own Bitcoin in my wallet app, which is basically like it fetch. I was using the API functions from random to learn how it works, and it just fetches values and it updates your prices. So uh, yeah, so what are the important takeaways from this presentation is basically, uh, so framework can do wonders. This is what I learned at Frappe, like the power which we have to customize things and improve your processes is brilliant. Uh, second is optimizing time is the key. It's, it's the automation part again. No one wants to waste time, right? Like everyone wants to save that. Uh, so again, an important one in FOSS, which is F, which is freedom for work, right? So uh, if you have a lot of uh, flexibility to do that, you can, your unique processes can match your businesses in just one click. And don't be afraid of coding. It's pretty like it just, you learn a couple of parts from somewhere, 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 add it up, and it works. Uh, yeah, and my favorite word is Jugard. This basically, it's an Oxford now. So uh, save time, chill, and automate most of processes. In English, it's called a flexible approach to problem solving that uses limited resources in an efficient way. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.